Canada is allowing a Chinese state-owned oil company to conduct offshore drilling off the east coast of the country. Welcome back to Andrew Says. I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once. We're back in the studio and we've got some Canadian news for you, as we all know and love. Canada, China. The decision was made following a thorough and science-based environmental assessment process, concluding that the project is not likely to cause significant adverse environmental effects when mitigating measures are taken into account, the federal government said in a news release. Federal Environment and Climate Change Minister, which of course is a thing in Canada, Jonathan Wilkinson established 101 legally binding conditions that the proponent, the Chinese National Offshore Oil Corporation, must follow for the entirety of the project. The company made a cool $300 million for two offshore exploration licenses. Understandably, this has bothered Canadians. Why? Why would it bother us so much? Because there are a lot of problems here, not with just dealing with China on its own, but how Canada deals with China and how often and on such a scale we deal with China and the, si China and the situations around that. Uh, we arrested we, the Canadian government, arrested uh, and kicked out the Huawei CFO, the chief financial officer. In return, China has detained two Canadian diplomats for the last year, accusing them of espionage. Uh, Canada had to put laws into place a couple years back in real estate to prevent Chinese investors from buying up even more property than they already have. The Prime Minister has been accused of getting huge donations and uh, giving special treatment at fundraisers to Chinese billionaires, and even more than that. But what's most infuriating to people about this is that Justin Trudeau campaigned on environmentalism and climate change and keeping the air clean and the water clean and all that jazz that everybody loves. But now he's letting China, a, comp a country that I'm going to go ahead and assume say isn't the toughest on environmental restrictions to pay our government to drill offshore, to do offshore drilling outside of our country in our waters. Now, is that going to make our gas prices lower? Is that going to benefit Canada? More than likely not. More than likely that's just going to go to the federal government, whether that means it's spending on things we love and need, that remains to be seen. But nothing seems to make our gas prices go down no matter what we do. Not only that, but we can't even use in Canada we cannot even get approved a pipeline that the government bought because it wasn't getting approved. The government bought it. They shelled out billions of dollars to buy this pipeline. And they're just like, we're going to get it done. We're going to get it passed. Uh, we're going to get people to accept that we want to put it in. It's going through native lands. It's, it, it's not very safe, they say, among other reasons. So it's not being used. It is not being used to ship oil across our country and make the price of gas go down. Some people say, okay, if the pipes are too, aren't safe enough and they're going to cause leaks, can't we just <laughs> ship it across the country in trucks? And no, that will cause more emissions, obviously. But China, but China, the country that couldn't care less about the environment, all they have to do is shell out a measly $300 million, which we know is going to be nothing to them, and they can do offshore drilling, which I'm going to guess... The environmentalists who don't approve of fossil fuel industry as a whole already are not going to approve of offshore drilling, but the Canadian government this way gets to say, hey, it's not us doing it. Uh, we said that we made them commit to not spilling oil. <laughs> Let me know how that goes for you. <sighs> now, Canada could be energy independent, but we aren't. That is if I'm actually from Canada. There's tons of lumber, tons of fresh water, oil, minerals, but often specifically for things like unprocessed crude oil, we sell it to the United States and buy it back processed after. We're not, not very good in Canada at developing or producing our own energy, which would make us and should make us a ton of money. Believe it or not, the province province of Ontario sells its excess energy to New York State and Michigan at a lower price than it costs its own people. <laughs> if you can believe that. Uh, evidence of that. This article from 2017. But before we get to that, perfect time I had you, I have you have you on the hook. Perfect time to mention my Patreon. I just uploaded some new videos there that YouTube will not let me have on here. So if you want to see that and you want to see what else is on there, advanced content, exclusive content, that's just $1 a month, maybe shirtless photos, you never know, patreon.com slash Andrew Says. And while you're on the internet, just follow me at instagram.com slash Andrew Does. That's at Andrew Does on Instagram. 
Ontario lost up to $1.2 billion selling clean energy. Quote, this represents a year's worth of power for more than a million homes that Ontario has sold to other jurisdictions for less than what it costs to produce. Ontario ratepayers are essentially subsidizing hydro bills in places like Michigan and New York to the tune of $500 million per year. Now this is done by an engineer's union, uh, maybe they sh I shouldn't trust their word for it, I don't know, but this is a study that's saying this, and it's also something that people already know, that we sell excess electricity to neighboring states in Ontario, which is New York and uh, Michigan, at a lower cost than what it costs the consumer in Ontario. Not, we have all this extra energy, so let's make it cheaper, which you would do with any, any other product. There's an abundance, supply and demand, it's cheaper when there's a lot of it. Oh no, let's get rid of that excess and we can, we can squeeze some more money out of that, you know? Now right-leaning people do not like, uh, this is something that right and left come together on in terms of disliking the federal government, disliking Justin Trudeau. Right-leaning people don't like his policies uh, surrounding climate change and stuff like that because they're too liberal for them, obviously. And further left-leaning people, I say further left because I mean the people who voted for parties that are further left than Justin Trudeau's party, they don't like that he says makes all these promises and he doesn't keep them. Uh, he says he cares about the environment but doesn't really do anything different. And then he goes and he buys a pipeline, doesn't do anything with it. So that makes the the more conservative people mad and the people at West who rely on oil production as a means of their way of life. And then the left leaning individuals see him say that I'm going to do all this stuff for the environment and we're going to be stricter on climate change and we're going to be harsher on the polluters but uh let's just bring in china to do some offshore tour drilling if you had to pick two things that aren't good for the environment you'd have to take a, a country or company that doesn't care about the environment and at the top you'd have to say china if not india but china's also communist and then you have to say offshore drilling or fracking would have to be right up there in terms of both things the people who care about the environment or a government that purports to care about the environment would do. Now, who has been saying this? Who has been saying that modern liberal and Democrat politicians say one thing and do another, uh, say that they care about issues and that they don't actually care about and just don't do anything about even when they're elected? Hmm. Could it be me? Could it be the one who says that I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once? Let me know what you think in the comments. Is this good for Canada, bad for Canada? Are we relying, is America, is, is the West, is the UK and Canada relying too much on foreign oil when there's plenty of it in North America? You don't need to go to Saudi Arabia. You don't need to get China to, to drill for oil. Am I right about that? Tell me what you think. Uh, how are you about climate change and oil and fossil fuels? Let me know in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter at Andrew Says TV. Sounds like Bernie Sanders there. On TV!